We'd like to continue discussing the response you got regarding your concerns that there are in fact no laws. You were quite surprised to receive a response. It did take quite some time. The vast majority of people you contacted did not reply. In fact, only one organisation, one entity, one body did. Yes, only one replied, which I did not expect. And even then, a high degree of anonymity was retained? 100% anonymity. Anonymity to such an extent that even when I ask, you know, who are you, please tell me what your name is, uh, whoever replied didn't do that, but they carried on giving me the information with how to solve the problem. Yes. Which I found very interesting and therefore I don't want to disclose much more about which entity replied because of the way that I wrote the document, meaning uh, notice to agent is notice to principal and notice to principal is notice to agent, so because it's vice versa, I've actually spoken to all of them. Within their organization? Yes. Yeah. They cannot uh, discount the validity of, of the communication. No. Oh, only someone over there in that section saw yes. it. Th that's correct. But I'd like to, in that sense, not disclose who the reply came from for the simple reason that once people see what this is all about, I don't want 10,000 or 20,000 or 100,000 people to bombard that particular individual or that particular organization with how do I solve my traffic fine, how do I get out of this, stuff? what do I, what do I do, what do I do, it's all in here. Would you say that you already have that information, therefore it is no longer necessary for viewers, listeners, third parties to contact them, yes. that organization, with the same questions that That's you've correct. already asked and received a response to? Correct. Except that what, what I've got is how to do it, okay, what to do, but I personally haven't done it yet. So you would be saying they have confirmed your concerns regarding the fraud? Yep. And they have also told you how to extricate yourself? The, yes. The escape Correct. valve? They, 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 they gave us all the exit clauses, they gave us all the answers, all the solutions. It's now up to us as individuals, personally, for each one of us, to implement what's in here and go out and physically do it because there's no template for this. That administrative court decision out of court settlement means that at the end of the day it'll be a private arrangement. As individuals we each need to do this ourselves. There is no collective movement? No. No, no collective can, action? No. You can go to bodies and people and things that will try and do it, the fact that it might not get corrupted uh, is minimal. Uh, there is no class no, lawsuit? No, no, none whatsoever. But it's a global thing that if everybody does this and, and, and go ahead and implement it, it will probably bring the results into their own lives because not many people want to go that deep into all of this. It's a very, very big event that's busy taking place on planet Earth. And I believe that these people know that there's so many of us that's busy doing this that the system is basically busy falling over and we've actually won. And what they, I think this, this is actually what's happened. They're telling us that soon life will be different for all of us because nobody's happy with the current situation. If people can honest to God tell me they enjoy waking up in the morning, going to work, doing their jobs, coming home, and doing it again and again and again and again and then they retire, they go to an older job and then they die and then they reincarnate and they do it again and again. If, if, if everybody wants to buy into that matrix, good for them. I don't buy that. There's something else that we're missing because none of us get to actually live our lives and by the time we do get a little bit of time and freedom, you're 70, 80, 90 years old, whatever, and you die. And that was it. Okay? No. Something's wrong. There's something we're missing. So, let me get back to the document. So, we've covered this in a previous one, but I'll repeat it uh, just for the sake of this exercise. The way commerce was set up many years ago is that there's no legal tender in the hands of any people, the people any longer. Due to there not being any legal tender in circulation, because we are the collateral against the money, there had to be a system put into circulation that would allow debt to be paid which is where we now have the debt system of credit in place. 
When your birth certificate was publicly, publicly recorded three days after your birth, the corporate entity was established. That's the all caps name. As I'm sure you already know, this entity is not yours and never has been yours. You were only made the collateral for it. Your birth mother gave permission to the government, the private company, the organization with the same status as McDonald's or KFC, which she didn't know at that point in time because it wasn't fully disclosed, it wasn't transparent, so there actually wasn't a real contract. To the government to handle all of your commercial affairs, which is to pay the debts, medical treatment, driver licenses, etc. And in return, they got to profit from handling your commercial affairs because they converted everything that you put your signature upon into a bond which they sold and traded on. They, they bought it and traded on your life, your energy, on your body. So just because they put your name on the accounts doesn't mean it's yours. They own the corporate entity, the corporate trust account to your birth certificate. Now so many people in this I wouldn't say the free man movement because I'm not part of the free man movement. I'm not part of the sovereign citizen movement. I'm just me. But so many people in all these different movements debunk trust account, trust account, there's no such bloody thing. Well, why would these people reply to me and say the corporate trust account attached to your birth certificate? Bloody hell, there it sits. Real. Even if you've moved from one country to another, it doesn't stop it because commerce is worldwide. So this means when I left Northern Rhodesia as a five-year-old child that made it through the border post alive, went to South Africa, got registered there as a new South African citizen, went to New Zealand as a refugee, got registered there as a citizen, spent five years there to become a citizen, now doing the work in Australia to help the Glossa Channel with this research. Every single time that happens and I become a citizen, all that happened is the trust account got exported. It never had anything to do with me. It was just commerce. But I spent the time and the years and the effort and the labor and the sweat and went through the traumas and things of going through all these separate different countries. And they're all, all the time from day one. Since I was born, I actually only operated under commerce. And this has been happening globally since 1933, which is interesting. Now further, now remember, they're not replying to my concerns. They're just telling me out of bits and pieces of what I've given them because they're not going to face up. They're not going to take liability for the crimes because they can't. There's no fucking law. So what they say to me, because you claim a status doesn't mean it's yours. Because I live and I work in the private and in the confidential. I don't work in the public domain. And this is me. I've been doing that. What, what I'm doing here is what I'm doing. This is me. I don't do anything else than this. So you have to undo what was previously done and put something else in its place. In other words, you have to cancel the contracts between you and every government entity. And then you have to put new contracts in its place. When you cancel the contracts, the accounts attached to the contract do not automatically become yours. And that's the interesting thing. Now there comes the post-liminary concept. You see, because when we go post-liminary, we just walk away from the system. That's all good and well. But what happened to the contracts? So I close a bank account. The bank says to me, good stuff, your bank account has been closed. Thank you very much. Blah, 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 blah. No. I don't have the use of that account anymore, but they've given that account to someone else and someone else is using that account right now. It never ever closes until you go back and you rescind the contract, you withdraw your signature, you cancel the contract and you get a copy of that debt certificate given to you and you become the holder in due course of that debt certificate. And then the money that they're making from trading upon that certificate comes to you as the beneficiary. This is how this thing works at the end of the day. But anyway, I'm going a little bit ahead of the time. So, these accounts did not automatically become yours. They were never yours. So why would they become yours? Because you claim that what's happened in, was fraud. So the fact that it was fraud, nobody gives a shit. 
they say, yeah, outright. Why would a fraudulent thing that's busy happening out there, once I know about it and I cancel the contract, why would it become my property? It's not my property. Okay, so what's the story? Good. Are you, all you really can do is to get out from underneath their control. Sever your collateral responsibility to the corporate entity. Wow. Sever your collateral responsibility to the corporate entity. And start over with handling your own commercial affairs within the same system that commerce created. This time you list yourself as the trustee. You become the creator and the executive manager and you learn how commerce works and how to operate within it.